So, Mo Diggity, have you seen that I'm now an internet celebrity? Uh, no, I had no idea. What what happened? <laughs> who who like what 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 degenerate server were you in now? Let me let me tell you. It, it's 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 been a while, so this has not happened. It's been a while. So the, la- the last time we did a mocast that actually came out, but I created yeah, a yeah. smash hit internet video entitled "Breaking Bad Nintendo DS Title Screen," <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and you see, the idea was very simple. The, let me tell the origin of "Breaking Bad Nintendo DS Title Screen." Um, um. So I was just sitting in a call with Demi Gloom. And Demi Gloom's like, yo, I've been fucking around at FL Studio. Tell me how this sounds. And the song plays. And immediately I get a stroke of genius. And I'm like, you know what this song sounds like? It sounds like Breaking Bad for the Nintendo DS. And then, <laughs> and then, and then we got funny with it. And Demi Gloom put in a, a Brit crushed voice clip of Walter White saying like his full name and address and confessing like that, like that scene from near the end of Breaking Bad. That we yeah. memed on for a little bit. It's a bit crushed like version of that scene. And I had Jason make a video that was a Nintendo DS title screen for a breaking bad <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> DS license game. 141,000 views. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say what? 141,000 on. views. No shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, fucking nice, man. Hell and yeah. I've, got, I've gotten sub gain from it too. Before I posted that video, I believe I had 94 subs. Now, now, now Robin, why don't you tell me what that number says now? 10. How much? 210. 210 subscribers. Oh shit. I guess like we're going to be putting this on your fucking uh <laughs> your your YouTube channel now, huh? If we cared if we, if we if we cared about the Mocast getting views, we would still put it on your main channel cuz that's where it was doing numbers before. <laughs> yep. If only Bitshoot didn't suck out loud, man. We could have been somebody on there, but fuck a bunch of Bitshoot. <clears throat> Fair. I haven't used BitChute in years. I feel bad because I was so like, I was so like genuinely invested in the platform as like an actual like free speech alternative to YouTube that worked, and I actually got some sort of traction on. But it was it was short lived because the website stopped fucking working to the specifications I needed because <laughs> bandwidth and bullshit and bad programming. So at the end of the day, I, I ended up back on YouTube where oh yeah everything just works, but it's also sucks. <laughs> Well, Bitshoot killed Bitshoot because Bitshoot doesn't want to fucking thrive. And I honestly think it's just a, I think it's just a scam now. Like you go to Rumble, you go to Minds, you go to Library, you go to fucking any of these other quote unquote YouTube alternatives. Almost every single one of them have a uh, fucking HD and streaming. <laughs> Why doesn't Bitshoot fucking have that? It was ar- it was once upon a time, arguably, the uh, YouTube contender, the number one one. Uh, but then, you know, Rumble came around and booted off almost all the Nazis, I, I think. Is Rumble and, good? Uh, Should I get into Rumble's, Rumble? Rumble's kind of fucking good. I'm monetized on Rumble. So, uh, like, and I'm a fucking nobody. I have hardly any subs, so, but... Uh, I put in enough uh, videos and stuff, got enough views, I guess, and, you know, boom, there you go. Yeah, fair enough. Does it, like, do you have any problems with uploading or anything like that? Because that was my main issue with BitChute, is, like, after a while of using it, it just, like, stopped processing my uploads. <laughs> oh, well, honestly, you can link your the YouTube channel that you want, and it just uh, uploads on that channel automatically from YouTube, so... You only theoretically have to upload one time. Oh, d- can you like link your YouTube channel and it'll upload all your shit and then it will keep it updated? Uh, yes, that is correct. That's pretty lit. You know, I might. I kind of want to play around with you. If that happens, though. What'd you say? What issues? Compression issues. Doesn't it like have weird compression issues if you connect? I didn't. To YouTube and I haven't note. I haven't noticed on my end at the very least. Yeah, you know, I want to I want to play around with YouTube competitors because I fucking hate YouTube as a company and I want it to burn. Uh, so maybe I'll I don't know, maybe I'll I'll port my channel to Rumble. Like if it's a one time process, why not? It so does see take, what I do on there. Uh, depending on how many uh, videos you have on there, they did say it takes days or weeks for it to upload all your uh, YouTube videos on there, but. 
the YouTube videos that you upload while, uh, you know, to YouTube afterwards, it takes like literally like a couple of hours to like maybe a day to clear. Interesting. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll port on uh, my newer channel, uh, Riley's unedited Let's Play Hellscape. Cause that'd take less time to get all the videos through. And we'll see how it performs on there. I don't know. I don't know how much of a fucking let's play scene Rumble has. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, really none. There's not really much of a gaming uh, presence on there. But I think dudes like you and you and me could fucking uh, get that on the fucking forefront. Because it only takes uh, it only takes a couple of good like few hundred viewed videos to actually make a fucking uh, I guess a tag relevant or a category relevant and then boom we take off and we end up becoming you know the the pewdiepies or the fucking uh uh what insert youtuber that you like here we become the pewdiepie uh, of, of rumble yeah which i actually argue would be really really great because i'd have a an absolute ton of money and viewers and subs and all that but i don't really need that honestly i have like a limit to where i would be happy if i had like swagger souls fucking uh you know, money, you know, like per video and stream and stuff, I would be happy. Or maybe, uh, you know, uh, a really high bar you're setting. I don't think it's that high. I think it's like, I think it's, uh, reasonable. I, I guess it's realistic. Or, you know, uh, Soviet Womble would be really, really cool to have that. Or at the very least, you know, like, oh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't need to, make millions and millions and millions a month or a you know, dream. It's like, I don't give a shit about being rich. Like that'd be, it obviously be cool to be rich, but like, I, whatever, I don't give a fuck. All I want to do is be able to like make content and live off of it. I don't even have to live well off of it. Just enough to like keep a roof over my head and food in my mouth. And that's, that's all I need. And enough to keep the, keep the electricity that runs the computers that I make the content on running. <laughs> Stuffing hopium. That's what that sounded like. <laughs> is hopium. There's nothing wrong with hopium. No, it's copium, is what it is. No, I ain't coping yet. No, I mean <laughs> I really like the money's nice, but I don't need money. Created. I really like hopium. <laughs> no, well, ho hopium's a real thing. There's yeah, nothing wrong. Real. Yeah, hopium's <laughs> a good thing to have. It's better than copium because oh. then you got the then you got the the soy jack with the smiling smug face mask on, but behind it, you're crying your eyeballs out. To, to give some behind the baseball to the viewers, I only, I've only done this once as far as they know, because uh, the other one didn't come out. Um, but in terms of titling the MoCast, like my, I just kind of like think of something. Like as we go along, like I'll, 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 there'll be something funny we talk about or something. I'll be like, that could be the title. And then by the end, I figure out a title. Right now, right now our front runner is the MoCast on Hopium. <laughs> MoCast on Hopium. The last, by the way, the last episode was going to be called the Ted Cruz cast on Pride. And I'm really sad that that didn't come to pass. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah, the, oh the, so we did lose that episode that was yeah a fucking we lost good, all right. we, we lost the episode where we made fun of you for looking like ted cruz okay all right all right all right so for those of you who are just now tuning in or whatever wondering where the fuck was the last episode of the mocast after i hyped it up on twitter and all that well uh slobs stream labs obs uh made an oopsie and just uh, shit all over the audio. And because I had confidence in slobs, I didn't download the Gearc or Craig uh, download link version of it. So because of me, I, uh, there is a literal lost episode of the MoCast. I, think, I don't know why you make the Streamlabs cut recording your primary recording. Like, well, it's, I it's, arguably, it's arguably the best way to record something. Oh. Multi-track? You have multi you've multi-track recording from Craig and Guy Arc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know, I know. For me, and I run I, I run up. I run OBS as a backup in order to yeah. make sure the episode is saved if Craig fucks up. But I think Craig should be the primary level of access because it's multi-track quality than anything you're yeah. record. Well, I got filters and stuff all on the Streamlabs one. You can't do really any filters on uh, on a uh, 
on Discord, like not the ones I like to use anyway. Well, what filters are you using? Because Discord has like uh, natural noise cancellation. Like it works yeah, I quite got, well. I got noise cancellation. I got noise suppression. I got compressor on. Is is that I, why they're all so fucking quiet? Have we found the culprit? Uh, well, so like if I do noise compressing our noise compressed voices. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I don't think so. Shit, I'll, I'll just I'll always just download the link after you know I, I get done with the episode. No, the, the, literally all you have to do now that we have a new editor who like can do shit. Literally, just send the link to her, and you're done. And then you'll have the episode in like two days. It, it's a right. very simple process. Hey, shut the fuck up! You're not the head administrator of this gigantic fucking media empire. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to cultivate here. I'm trying the to most, prop up. most side productions. Yes, most side productions. I, I I think I have a pretty high role in most side productions. I think um, I think I'm a, I, I a think higher you dreamed, class. I think you dreamed same. that you had a higher standing in most side productions. I'm like the the business manager. Like I'm I'm what? like one step down. If like, any of the three know. of us are a business manager, it's going to be Robin. Listen, you better give me a fucking corporate role. Like, even if it's a useless Man. one, you gotta give okay, me a corporate of title. Course. All right, of, of course, of course, of course. Like, all right, in, in my ideal scenario, all of us have jobs under most side gaming, but none of us do any real actual work. You know, like a regular businessman. I'm a funny man. I, I show up to make the jokes. That's, that's my ideal career. I'm, I'm an internet funny man. <laughs> yes, Robin will be CFO, and she will... Uh, I guess delegate all of her work to to other underlings, and that way you know everyone can kick back, relax, play Nintendo, you know, take a hit off a bong or something. I do want to tell a story about being stoned, but I feel like we should actually start the show first, and then I'll tell it. Yeah, we we should <laughs> actually start the show. All right, a one, a two, a skilly diddly do. What's up, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Welcome to the MoCast. I'm your host, Mo Diggity, and joining me as always are two favorite co-hosts. Say hello. What's up to Riley? Say what's up, Riley. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the MoCast. Let's fucking hello. go. Yes, uh, with many more people in charge of the distribution of the, the file, uh, other than myself, because I done goofed and I... I quite literally lost us an entire goddamn episode. No diggity is just a name on the label at this point. Like he, he yeah. has very little involvement. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like the Joe Biden of the of my of the company. I'm really just there just to keep up appearances. The real powers in the back, okay? The people who actually run the shows. In the, the, the real power They're, is with me, the Kamala Harris of the Bocast. No, fuck that. No, <laughs> you're like that. No, you're you're like the fucking Chris Christie. Oh, the MoCast. That's that's what the fuck you are. I'm the Nancy Pelosi of the MoCast. Oh, God. No, <laughs> no, no. Not even as a joke. That's an insult to you to compare you to Nancy Pelosi. And Mo is obviously the Ted Cruz of the MoCast. Oh, <laughs> for God. sure, for sure. Well, it's better than being fucking, what's his name, the dude with the eye patch? Uh, uh, Dan Crenshaw. Yeah, there we yeah. go, there we go. And joining us as always, the, the number one co-host, uh, Robin. Say what's up, Robin. Hey, what's up? That was a long preamble, before, like in between Riley's introduction and my introduction. Yes, it's, it's quite unusual. We don't normally do that, but I guess we did it this time. Anyway, right. so let Riley, me tell you. You, you, had a, you had a story about getting baked. So have you ever been stoned for like days? Like yeah. plural days at once? Oh, just yeah, yeah, row. yeah. Yeah, like how you do it is you just take a little bit from your bud 
and fucking puff on that, right? And you just coast on that high, like say you wake and bake, and then you just fucking do that again and again and again, just like little fucking baby hits uh, throughout the day. And you can stay at that persistent level of morning high throughout the entire day. The only time you're sober is when you're sleeping. Heroic edible. A what? Like I got like full fucked for like. You could, two you days. could also eat like a heroic sized edible. Oh god, yeah, but then I'm going to end up in a fucking in a fetal position, having the biggest panic attack I've ever had. That's what happened to me the last time I did edibles, so I don't do edibles. <laughs> but no, yeah, I had like Delta Eight oil, which I know is pussy shit, but like if you smoke enough of it, it works just as well. Um, and I just like was stoned for like two days. <laughs> and I just like just kept hitting it. I I played some GTA Five. I watched some funny YouTube. I took a lot of naps, and I was just high for two days, and it was great. Goddamn! So you were fucking towely baked, huh? Yeah, man, it's pretty I great. Know, but playing GTA on. Five while baked, pretty fun. Oh yeah, fucking Grand the Grand the entire Grand Theft Auto series is the type of game to get baked to. I mean, it's just it's just so much fun to play GTA when you're baked. It's just fucking awesome. Like, and, and any of them. You know, from 1 through uh, GTA 5, man. Fucking any of them. Are GTA 1 and 2 good? Because I, I, like, never hear about them. Like, it's the same thing with, like, Persona, where, like, you never hear about the first two. You hear about 3, 4, and 5. Like the same oh. the same thing with GTA, except you also hear about like Vice City and San Andreas, like the non numbered ones. But you don't hear oh. about one or two. Oh, number one and two, if I recall correctly, are both uh P and top poop. down what? Uh, number ones that's pee and poop. Pee and poop. Oh shit. Shut up. <laughs> Robin, this is this is language unbefitting the number one podcast co hoster. Come on. I'm the number two podcast co host. <laughs> Ew. Anyway, now uh fucking number one and two are top down bird's eye view uh of the game. Like have you ever played the very first Ninja Turtles game on the NES? No, but I'm imagining a top down Ninja Turtles game that sounds awful. No, it's really it's bad. no, it's it's fucking cool. But like any anywho, anywho. Yeah, it's just a top it's just a top down bird's eye view of the map and how you're doing and all that. It's it's actually kind of neat, but really no one cared about GTA. Well, people cared about GTA and GTA 2 because it got into a bunch of controversy with uh, lawmakers because you can. it was the first one of the first games where you could just fucking uh, open fire on fucking civilians and cops and shit, and you get chased down by the cops and they fucking gun you the fuck down. No one arrests you or anything. They just gun you down. And it's actually, it, it was cool for its time. And then GTA 3 Arnold came out. Shoot at a cop. Oh, no. G GTA 3, like, revolutionized gaming, yeah. didn't it? Oh, dude, it was, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a huge, huge leap forward for the gaming industry and just gaming as a whole. Because it really showed, uh, it showed the industry what you can do with a 3D rendered, uh, 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 sprites and uh, animation and stuff like that it, and 3D map technology. It was really, really fucking cool. You know, the weird thing about the Grand Theft Auto fr franchise that's always bothered me, even though GTA, F GTA 5 is equivocally my favorite just because I really like the story a lot and the game plays really well, I think GTA 4 was like the pinnacle of like a world that felt real because like they had so many little details that like you wouldn't really think about that exist in GTA 4 to make things feel more real, but do not exist in GTA 5. Like, in GTA 4, you could go into, like, virtually any building, and there was an actual, like, interior that you could go into. Like, you go into the hospital, you can go into the fucking restaurants. You can't do that in GTA 5. Um, and in GTA 4, like, the, the littlest shit you don't think about. In GTA 4, you can pick, like, a can up from the ground and throw it at somebody. Can't do that in GTA 5. Yeah, un unfortunately, as, uh, as 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 advanced and more expensive gaming gets, the uh, the less we're gonna get. I mean, we we get a lot, but we we miss out on a lot of the little things, like you know the compa contrast comparison to four and five. You know, 
And it's kind of sad that we're leaving that we're losing that and leaving that behind just for the sake of saving a few extra dollars. But personally, I think there should be like some I don't know, there there should be some federal mandate that sort of like caps like how how much a game uh gets, you know, like you can spend to make a game. Because to be honest, you know, when a game really, really sucks, like uh uh fucking Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven and look how much or Destiny or Destiny two. Cyberpunk uh, doesn't look the, that bad. Like it, it seems looks, like they fixed it, a lot of the glitches. It used to it be, looks fun. But, but I it was fun for a little bit, but like honestly, you pre order the game or you get it at full fucking cost. Like dude, I, I felt ripped off when Didn't I started playing the game. A lot of people were you able to get a refund for it? Well, no, because like I did want to play the game eventually, but this is sort of uh it it's it's sort of sad when this is sort of like the state of the gaming uh industry now, you know, because now we don't know if we're going to get a really, really great game, you know, at launch. You know, I, I hate the day one patch shit. I, I, I hate the whole like, well, we had to rush it out the door because we got death threats and all that. Like, dude, you're no offense, but you guys are just going to have to like start blocking and muting a lot more, man. I'm afraid I love early access. Though. I'm afraid with gaming. I, I kind of like early access a little bit. I think it's more of a boon than it is a scam. And I think the scam part's finally over. I think uh, early access now has some legitimacy thanks to games like uh, Fortnite and Apex Legends and stuff. I just really hope, I think like crunch and like games being rushed to reach their logical conclusion before it's meant to be reached is, it's just so tragic how many games have fallen victim to that. And I yeah. really hope, because like I feel... With how the gaming industry been, it feels like it's almost going to be impossible to get it like an open feeling game that isn't shit. Because like the last example I can remember of that is like Red Dead Redemption Two, and when did that come out? Like 2016. Like I I'm scared GTA Six or like whatever other open game they make is just going to be shit because of the current scope of gaming that just incentivizes them to rush it out unfinished and broken. And oh, yeah. we'll fix it later. Just saw yeah. the Rockstar, they're they're putting GTA 4, the remake, on hold, and they're putting Red Dead on hold in order mm. to push out GTA 6 faster. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. they, I thought they canceled the GTA 4 remake because the uh, trilogy did so bad. That's what I heard. I have no idea. Th that's what I heard was they, they put it on hold. You know, they were going to remake GTA 4 and the original Red Dead. But I, I heard they were canceled because the GTA trilogy did bad. But maybe you're right. I don't know. I you know were, what? I, I heard they were both put on hold in order to push GTA Six faster. I mean, personally, Just whatever. It, it's unfortunate because another downside of this, uh, you know, throw millions and millions and millions uh, of dollars at a game, we we start getting shoddy products. Like, for example, the. Uh, the the triple pack of fucking GTA remake games, and they want. Oh, they were so bad. That. They were yeah, so they, bad. They were super super bad. And then there was uh, uh, there there was uh the fucking Warcraft three reforged debacle, and that was a fucking shit show. Like I was really really hard on uh No Man's Sky when it came out, but then because uh. Because they're such a tiny indie dev studio, uh, after a while, you start seeing reasons why maybe you should cut them some slack. And the uh, the work that they did after they just shut up for about a year and what we have now, it is sort of the finished product that they did promise us. So, yeah, it constantly. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like the biggest glow up. In gaming, yeah, exactly. like I remember, I remember people talking like mad shit about No Man's Sky, like when it first came around. But then, like years later, all of a sudden, it's like everybody's like, "Holy shit, dude, you got to play yeah, No Man's great. Sky!" And I'm like, "What the fuck? I thought that game sucked." <laughs> yeah, and the only reason why people stopped talking about No Man's Sky and that debacle is because Fallout 76 happened. And you know, I know they're like not, they're not a huh. I know people who like Fallout 76. It doesn't seem I like too bad. Fallout, I like Fallout 76 too. It's just that the uh, 
the beginning, the launch was a fucking disaster. And everything related to the launch uh, was a fucking disaster, too. Uh, the, then there was the pre-order bonuses, the physical items and stuff that was really shitty. Uh, people were mad about how they really cheaped out on the quality of the bag because that wasn't advertised. They got something else. Because once you see in front of you, if they advertise a mesh, a sturdy mesh bag, then you should get the fucking sturdy mesh bag. You shouldn't get this oh, fucking yeah, nylon the mesh bag. This, this nylon fucking piece of That's shit correct. that that if you smoke a cigarette or a doobie and like a cinder fucking falls on it, it just fucking melts away because the material is so shitty and so cheap. Like those people deserved all the bad press that they got from that. And maybe uh, you know since I think Microsoft bought them out, if I'm recall correctly. Hopefully they get their their asses in gear. Hopefully Blizzard does too, but I kind of doubt it. All right, I have something to bring up, and I want I want a perspective from both of you on this. I feel like this is well, going to turn into like angel and the devil on the shoulder uh, type well, conversation. Well, real quick, Robin, did you have anything to say before Riley starts up? Kind of. Okay. I okay. Say, um, so the I I completely forgot about the bag thing, but I I did want to bring up um. Did you guys ever get any of those like crazy like pre-order bonuses, like the really expensive like upgrade ones? Uh, no, I didn't. That was it. Was I think I've ever had a pre-order life. bonus in my life? Not even I like did, sometimes I, you get like an art book, right? I did get a really sweet pre a uh, 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 little handful of pre-order bonuses when I pre-ordered uh, Black Flag. It came with like a little map and a uh, a fucking uh, a medallion. That I still have somewhere. I lost the map a long time ago, but I still do have the medallion somewhere. And I thought stuff like that was really, really cool. I've never pre-ordered a game, never once. Dude, I I, I went to the um the pre-order the midnight launch of of Black Ops Two. Oh, nice! And I got the the care package. I don't remember how expensive this thing was, but it, it was a big ass. You get this huge box that was like. I don't even know, like, three feet? <laughs> like, he, just a big box, or like two and a half feet or something. And it had, like, a shitty drone, which didn't really work all that well, and, like, broke immediately. It was really bad. It was, like, when that's right, that's were, like, right, first, that's first right. starting to pop out. Yeah. yeah like, a, like a steel book, uh, like a couple other, like, wacky things. But the box was the coolest part. It was just a big old care package. Nice. I think I saw that on sale for, like, 80 bucks one time in some, like, third-party game, show, uh, game shop. I think I, I technically got a pre-order bonus because I believe if I'm if I'm right on this, I think I'm right. So I think Sonic Colors Ultimate had like a pre-order bonus of like some dumb little keychain. And the GameStop website after the game came out was just selling the pre-order edition for the same price when I went to go buy the physical release. So I just bought the pre-order edition and got the keychain, even though I bought the game like weeks after it came out. That's the pro strat, yeah, that can happen. Not with like the yeah. crazy expensive ones, like the care package. There was no no shot, but like some of the the cheaper ones where it's like ten dollars more or whatever, you can just get them like at GameStop the next day. I got the uh, special edition Gears of War two for the Xbox three hundred and sixty, and it came with uh the game and a uh, a DVD chock full of bonus material and bonus shit from the making of the game and all the uh, the devs and stuff had like a little blurb and stuff on there. And the, the case was the coolest thing. It was a solid metal, uh, like hard case and had like yeah. a great graphic design and stuff on it. That was one of my favorite fucking things on there. You know, you remember when bonuses like just were there? Like you, you didn't yeah. have to pre-order, you didn't have to get DLC or anything. They were just like fucking there. Like, there was just cool shit, like, in your game that wasn't the game. Like, uh, the best example I can think of is uh, Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2, which came out for the PS3 and Xbox 360, which was, like, you, you got your whole ass Dragon Ball fighting game. It's really fucking good. Probably the best mechanic, mechanical 3D Dragon Ball fighter that exists. And also, there was just, like, a whole ass, like, 30-minute movie, like, a little special that's just in the game, and they made it 
they remade an old special that nobody's seen in America for the game, and you can just watch it in the game. Now you get all these, like, you know, $60, you get, like, a brand new game. And then there's, like, the deluxe edition, like, t- for $10 more, $70 now. <laughs> or I guess for, like, PS5 new generation stuff, it'd be $70. Upgrade is $80. And then for the extra 10 bucks, what you get out of it is the soundtrack and a digital art book. Like, wow. I'm going to pay $10 for that, huh? Really? <laughs> yeah, seems a little weird. Like, at least throw in a fucking cosmetic or something. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of lame that now we get online bonuses and stuff, and they're not really worth the shit. Like, I, I don't care if I get, like, you know, like the Scooby-Doo outfit or something in, like, some game or, like, whatever. I mean, I guess, uh, like, it was fun when you got bonus items after you beat the game, like, X amount of times. Like, the best, uh, one of the coolest ones, uh, the Resident Evil series, if you beat the A or B game like two or three times a piece, you get an extra key that goes to like a little uh, uh, costume station and you get like the old costumes from like the old games and stuff like that. I miss doing that because I guess that's the problem that I have with some uh, some microtransactions. Sometimes it's no matter what you do, It'll take forever to get that cool little item. We could just buy it for like 10 bucks in the fucking store. Diablo Immortals going through a ton of shit because people played the game enough times to figure out how they're blocking the free to play players. And we found out just the other day, thanks to Asmongold, uh, he played a video on stream that where someone was doing a breakdown about how much it costs to get max level to even get your legendary uh, legendary gem. It costs, I, I think it was like $100,000 or something like that. Yeah. And then they interviewed the beta testers. Blizzard told them, hey, you're doing X, so we can figure out how Y works, and then that'll come up to Z. That turned out to be a total lie they were having them play and watching them play so they can figure out specifically how to stop the free-to-play players from advancing without paying a dime. So that's fucking lazy. So it's it's literally pay to advance or don't play the game at all. Or you get fucking, you get squashed, you get destroyed. There was that first figure that came out that was like, this is how much it theoretically costs to get like a full set of like the 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 gems well, or whatever. Yeah, like fifty thousand something yeah. dollars. And I then thought. they were like, actually, it costs this much. And then they found out once you once you unlock all of the like high cost ones, like it it unlocks a whole new tier where it goes up even more. So like, yeah, it increased like tenfold. So now it's like a million dollars or some shit to get fully upgraded. And oh my done god, that yet. really? Yeah, nobody's done that yet. So like. The, the, nobody has any idea if, like, once you do that, there's an even more, like, unlocks past that. Yeah, see, I, I remember when it hit 100,000-something dollars, and I didn't think it was going to go any higher, but now it's at a million? Something like that, because they, they found out there was, like, it, they were calling it, like, the secret whale, like, upgrade. Hang on. The oh, secret my whale. God. Whale yeah. Diablo, immortal. Let me look this up. Yeah, and, and, and calling people whales... Uh, it is such a derogatory fucking term that the industry now adopts in their like common vernacular when when they're referencing us. They're like, oh, this guy's K. not a whale. Yeah, Diablo <sighs> Immortal requires over 500k to max out character due to hidden whale mechanic. Where's Jesus Christ, wow. That's so weird. I suggested that a player would need six five star legendary uh, gems to gear a character to its fullest extent. On average, one uh, five star gem would cost a player 16,000, which brings the total sum maxing out a character to around 100,000. Shift your carcass dug a little deeper, saying there's a hidden whale mechanic. When you upend that is attached to a piece of rank uh, of gear above rank six, the gem will undergo an awakening process, gaining five additional slots around it. This means that a player will need to put five additional legendary gems into these slots and upgrade them each to rank ten. Due to this awakening, a user will not uh, will need not six but thirty six five star gems to fully max their character. God damn. Uh, yep. 
Yeah, that's pretty excessive. Seems very unnecessary. And then who knows, maybe you get all 36 and then it opens new slots and you have to just keep going forever and ever and ever. Uh, I'm going to do a barrel roll. <laughs> Someone's posting on about the Sky King. Uh, you remember that guy, how he just walked into an airport and just straight up walked on, onto a plane while no one was on it and fucking stole it and took off? That's sounds epic. <laughs> yeah, it's epic. He's dead because he crashed it because he didn't know how to uh he didn't know how to land it. Ah, uh, you but, see, yeah, you, you gotta know how to but, fly the plane before you steal it. You see, he he's he sort of reversed launch pad McQuacked it. If it can you know if, if it fly if it drives, I can crash it. I'm surprised he got it off you know, the fucking runway. Wait, did he get it off the runway? Yeah, he got off the runway the and air? did everything. Yeah, oh, the reason why I bring, even bring it up because I saw someone post a video that was recently released. It shows the dude's full fucking path. And what he does, first off, he goes into there, flashes the, his badge to like some random guard, and the guard just fucking uh, uh, randomly waves him off. He uh, gets to... He gets a fucking little taxi thing to taxi the plane out of the 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 air, uh, hangar. There we go, the hangar. And now he uh, he started on autopilot for a second to give like, it. What the fuck? This fucking plane's just like taxiing wherever the fuck they want. Like, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, he's just taking off right now. Well, they just posted the video of the full process of what he did. And yeah, like in a post 9-11 world, it's shocking that our that all the security that we put in there after all of the uh, the craziness and everything that we went through. It's crazy how easy it was for just some random dude to just go in there and steal a fucking plane. It's almost like it's all an unnecessary fucking public theater act and airport security has never helped a single person in its fucking entire existence. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad I don't fucking fly, man. I, I I couldn't, I couldn't handle the stress of it. Like, I don't want to get talked down to by pissed off NSA people and stuff. Like, yeah, I'm not trying to bag on you. I know this is your job, but some of you really, really suck, and it shows. You see, I'm scared to fly, but not because I'm scared to be in the air on a plane. I'm scared to fly logistically. Because I remember being a child and flying like with my grandmother and it being like a multi-hour ordeal where we had to like go through security and we had to like get on trams and shit. Like, I don't think I could pull that off. I think if I was tasked with getting on a plane, getting from point A to point B alone at an air airport, I don't know if I could do it. I think I could do it. I think I've, I think I've, uh gotten to the point in my mind where flying's just like taking the fucking bus and I I've been in like several near accidents uh I mean, in, in buses. That, you want to show up like two hours early at the airport like <laughs> checking bags. Like you gotta show up hella fucking early, like check your bags. Like Yeah. Because you don't know what kind of delays that, that are gonna happen when you get there. Like maybe maybe the bag checking is gonna take fucking forever. You know, you don't know what kind of lines yeah. you're waiting on. Yeah, I, I, I fucking hate that. Yeah, we used to get to the airport like hella early. Like back when I used to fly every summer with my grandparents. Like the flight would leave at like a reasonable hour, like nine or ten. But we would leave the house at like 4 a.m. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because you probably live for, for far. Yeah, like the, the, it's a decent drive to the airport, yeah. like an hour or something. And then we had to like go through baggage claim and like take trams to the right area of the airport. It's like this whole big ordeal. Well, this makes me excited to fly to fucking Florida. <laughs> you are doing that soon, huh? Yeah. Next no, it's not worth it. This place sucks. I might be moving soon. Where would you move? Oh, about an hour, hour and a half away. Why? Well, what is driving oh. you to do so? 
Oh, just, well, the fact that I live in a box and it's fucking super, super hot. And when it gets cold, it's fucking super, super cold. The only reason why I survived the winter here, even in Texas, was the fact that I had a space heater that I would have to like put practically between my legs and like wrap the blanket around it just so I can, you know, stay warm. Oh, I'm thankful for doing it. You know, like I, I, I I'm very, very adaptive. I, I can adapt to just about any climate. You know, given some time and you know all that, but uh, that almost know, sounds cozy. Like, there's just it, something about like annoying. finding secondhand solutions to shit, that, like makes you feel satisfied. Like, if you're too cold yeah. at night and you like find a way to warm yourself up, it's like you you get it consumed in it, and it's like, oh, it's so nice to be warm. And then you you have a good night's sleep, and it's based. I mean, your your ancestors still call you a little bitch for like bitching about it. Because, you know, like, my, my problems ain't nothing compared to, like, even my family, you know, my grandfather, like, you know, 60, 70 years ago. Because they grew up poor, 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 poor. And I just live in a box. And some people are going to go, like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And some people are going to be like, I, what the fuck? Like, yeah. when, I used to, when I used to work at the gas station, like, they had, like, no, no heating. They had an air conditioner, but my boss would get pissy if he turned it on. So... But during the winter, it got so fucking cold because there's no heating and it's like not insulated. So it's just whatever temperature it is outside, that's what it is inside. And I'm in New England, it gets fucking cold during the winter. Ah. Oh. And uh, so we we used to, we had this little spa- space heater, like not one of those big bulky ones, just a tiny little one. And you'd just put it right up next to your leg. You'd pretty much burn your leg. But <laughs> you'd have the heat from your burning leg heating the rest of your body. <laughs> You'd get the oh, blood yeah. flowing back. Yep, and that's all you do. You just burn your leg hairs off. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Like I was like singeing my my inner thigh hair like a lot, man. It fucking sucked, but it was also very, very cozy at the same time. So I guess I can't complain too terribly much. I mean, it's better than being homeless at the very least. In ways. If you're homeless, homeless would probably you don't suck have pretty bad. Costs. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to spend money if you're homeless. You could spend all your money on drugs. Oh, mm. Yeah. I just sound a little based. I don't know. You're right. That's what I'm saying. Imagine it, you didn't have to spend gets, money on like rent or anything. You could just buy drugs. It you gets kind of old real quick, though. To speaking from experience, like it's it's a little fun at first, especially if you're like you know home bumming it up with some buddies. But then, you know, one of them abandons you for three days because he's doing a bunch of smack with his new street girlfriend. And then you're like, dude, I don't know what to fucking do. I don't know how to be homeless. He did. Oh, shit. (laughs) That sucked. But I'll say this. Back in the day, Austin, Texas was the place to be homeless at because people actually kind of give a shit there. They'll, uh... Like the uh, the the Asian food places will put vegetarian meals out there with uh, rice and tofu and some vegetables on top, and they allow you to go in there to put some sriracha sauce and some fucking uh, uh, some uh, soy sauce on there. And dude, that tofu, like, dude, I was digging being a, a homeless Austin vegetarian. It was fucking delicious. Yeah, then those liberals came and ruined everything. Then those what? The liberals came and they took Austin and ruined everything. Uh, not so much liberals as I would say college kids and uh, vulture capitalists and fucking Californians. Like, uh, like, cause Austin, Texas is pretty much ruined. It's like apparently even worse now since the, uh, uh, the, uh, the summer 2020 riots. And uh, cause like it got hit real hard. With the uh, the the looting and the vandalization and just like uh businesses that were there for like fucking decades got ran out of the fuck out of town because uh someone turned it to a fucking uh little fire pit and burned it down and shit. So the old Austin's kind of more or less gone, and it sucks. So I wouldn't even be homeless in Austin anymore if I had to choose a place. Connecticut's on the chopping block for gentrification soon. I, I keep seeing a uh, New Haven, Connecticut pop up in like all the 
to like up and coming cities in the United States. Oh. And I'm like, no, don't do it to us, please. <laughs> we really don't want any of you here. Like, dude, I'm I, I know maybe this sounds mean, but I'm a little bit fine with the fuck off we're fool mentality. I'm like, dude, I don't want like we're gonna we have, have stuff to do in Connecticut, but like we we already don't you know, we, we don't need whatever you're offering. We're fine. <laughs> Yeah, like please, like it wouldn't be a big deal if everyone wouldn't bring their uh their trashy habits with them. Like the uh the the big city people don't know how to throw their fucking Starbucks cups away. You know, they'll they'll aim for the trash can, if that on a good day. Other than that, it's tossing it at the trash can or around the vicinity of the trash can. So you're going up and down your fucking little downtown area that used to be you know, at least really clean. Now it's a fucking shithole. And like the worse the place gets, the worse the situation gets there. And I, I don't mean to be... Connecticut is like, it's the pizza capital of the world. That's where you get, or not the world, but the United States. It's the best pizza in the United States. Like on every metric, like all the like reviews of pizza, like all the like, you know, top 100 lists, put it like f- fucking five of them in the top 10. Oh, I thought that was like uh, New York Fuck and New Philadelphia. York. Uh we get on all the fucking lists because we got the old uh the old uh coal ovens. Not many places are uh, allowed to use coal ovens dude, anymore. I but wanna all grandfathered in. Dude, the the fucking the old school fucking pizza stoves are make the absolute best fucking pizza. And yeah. I will pick though I will pick the shittiest pizza out of a fucking pizza oven at least nine out of ten times out of like some regular conveyor belt pizza. Not to knock that too much. I mean, it is the unstoppable march of progress. But still, man, a, a fucking pizza oven is just so goddamn good. Every pizza out there is. A lot of coal <laughs> ovens now. It's like illegal to make coal ovens because it turns out burning coal regularly is kind of bad. Yeah. But if you, if you have one... And you've been using it, right? Like, if you're one of these businesses, you're one of these pizza places that's always been using coal ovens, you're grandfathered in. You could keep using it. You have it. You're allowed to use it. So there's just, like, a bunch of pizza places in New Haven, Connecticut that, like, still have their coal ovens. But I'm I'm afraid, yeah, if we get the fucking gentrifiers coming by, like, they're just, all these pizza places are going to go away. And it's going to be real sad. Or bought, even worse, bought up by, like, you know, big business or whatever. Oh, yeah, like the second worst thing besides the fucking citizenry in some of these shittier states is the fucking businessmen that just fucking show up and they're like, I'm going to buy this place up and there's nothing you, John Q. Local, can do about it. Mwahaha. And then you get all your iconic, you know, restaurants that have been here since the fucking 50s and they all go away for some shitty gaudy little fucking uh chain restaurant that no one asks for it's yeah, not even the chain ones anymore because we raised all the prices of the houses nearby Ooh, i'm sorry like we're just gonna I'm... have to offer you some money to quietly leave and give us your business and the rights to everything you own oh yeah man if there is ever a reason for revolution man it's the uh how foreign interests and domestic interests can just under the guise of being a company can buy up all of this fucking property in America and all the houses like BlackRock's doing in America and they fuck you every like dude we're we are not going to be you know my generation was the last generation to have the opportunity the possibility of of owning a home and I just don't think that'll ever happen again I I think we'll get it dangled in front of us and y'all two's generations are just Totally fucked right out of the gate too. Like Where's we're, your home? we're huh? You you bought a home, right? No, I don't have a home. Why not? You had the opportunity. No, I didn't have the money. <laughs> there you go. So you didn't have the opportunity. Well, like the opportunity, like I I I have the opportunity on paper and writing. You know, saying, but te- now technically I have the opportunity too. I just would need a, a ludicrous amount of money, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I just don't think that there's uh, really any houses that I would like that are worth a million fucking bucks. Because think about the fucking property taxes on a million fucking dollar home. 
that's going to set you back big time every fucking year. And that's just going to be a bill that there's going to be something shitty that happens to you and you're not going to be able to pay that bill. And the government comes in and fucking takes your shit. That's why I think property tax is a total fucking scam. How the fuck are you going to charge me for something I own? Yeah. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. and Property taxes are pretty fucking gay. Oh, yeah. The, the, the fucking bootstraps argument. Dude, that, that used to be uh, reasonable back in the day. Like, you could do the boomer thing, show up with... <clears throat> freshly shaved with your hair cut, nice looking, dressed professionally, you know, look them dead in the eye, shake your head, shake their hand, say, Hey, I need a job. I used to be able to do that. Now, like, dude, uh, no one, not even from fucking Taco Bell wants to fucking see me any day. She's just fucking fill out an application online with the rest of the mindless, uh, you know, faceless masses. And then we'll pick you out of the hat. Dude, it's like, Getting a job in America is like playing the fucking Hunger Games, man. It, they they pick your fucking name out of a fucking bowl, and there you go. You get you get job. Have fun at job. Make your life job, and that's it. It says you have a home, Mo. What? I just looked it up. It says you have a house. I don't have a house. How are you looking me up? Yeah, I just looked up your exact address and coordinates, and it's telling me that you have a house. I don't have a uh, house. It says right here, Senator Ted Cruz has a $2 million oh, fuck you both. house. I swear, you suck yeah, exactly. so much. <laughs> <laughs> now, I live in a box, man. It's it's nice, but I want out. I've been at this place a year, and I've been at my job in a couple of days, officially a year. So go me. I guess that's good. I have stability. I'll be officially two years at the end of this week. Nice, nice. <sighs> I don't even know how long I've been working. Not a year. I don't want a job anymore. Yeah, fuck having a job. Yeah, dude, having a job fucking really sucks, man. Like, dude, I should be able to be, like... Really what I want is I want to be like, I just want to fucking be creative and just make money off my creations, you know? And if I have I'm... that, I have that, it would be fucking fine. And I have the ability to have that now because guess what? Uh, I got fucking sponsored. So uh, I have a sponsor, you know, like, um, you know, Mo Diggity and Mo Side Gaming officially has a fucking sponsor. So fuck yeah. Yeah, isn't it FadeGrips.store? You have a discount code, right? Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, oh. FadeGrips and I had to part ways, and uh, we are no longer sponsored by them. By sponsored, oh. I mean, they're like, okay, so I didn't know it was really a scam, but like, you know, you pay and they'll say, oh yeah, we'll give you a, a fucking promo code. Like, dude, why don't you just tell me just give you 10 bucks instead of, like, waiting for your fucking... <laughs> give me $10. I'll, I'll pay you for the fucking code. But, you know, but this one's a, a real sponsor. So, you know, I, I would love to just fucking quit my, quit my gig and just fucking do this for a living since it seems like there's a light at the end of the tunnel now. It took a while, but, you know, I'm getting there. And uh, maybe... Maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we did have universal basic income. I feel the libertarian in me fucking screaming, no, no, when I fucking say that, but... How are we going to pay for it? No, no, that's socialism. No, it can't be. Yeah, well, maybe it's socialism in a way that I can fucking exist. Maybe I don't have to... Oh, maybe... Maybe people shouldn't have to overdraft every fucking month to pay their rent and bills. That'd be really, really also nice. Be really cool if we had access to universal health care. I want to say yeah to that. I just I don't know. Like COVID's kind of soured me on uh, the medical industry. Not 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 for be not because of of COVID itself or vaccines or anything like that. Anyone who's listening right now, don't get nervous. 
This isn't going on like that kind of rant, rant or anything. Vaccines, Mo? No, no, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with vaccines, but. Um, but you don't believe they work. <laughs> no, I totally believe they work. I never said they never work. Oh, don't get so defensive. I'm just asking you a question. <laughs> you're, trying, you, you're trying to fucking hornswoggle me and expose <laughs> me. You're trying to get me canceled by the liberal media on well, we Twitter. The anti-vaxxer here is Riley, so it's all right. <laughs> I'm yeah. not an anti-vaxxer. I'm an anti-masker. You should get the vaccine because that's just a one-time thing. I don't think you should wear a mask for your entire life, but you should get a vaccine. Yeah, at least a three-time thing and maybe more. Yeah, fuck yeah, they, the booster they, shots too. They are they are uh, uh, pimping out the the you know uh, hawking those fucking boosters. Like I actually a couple of days ago, I got a call from my healthcare provider. It was an automated message asking, "Have you gotten the booster shot or the initial vaccine yet?" Press one for yes, two for no. It was like I'm at work right now. I don't have time for this, so I hung up. Because, like, I'm not trying to get any lists or on any lists or anything like that. I don't need to be bothered. But, yeah, it would be it would be sure nice if I could just, like, make art and create stuff and just get paid for that, you know? Like, I, I, I think the uh, a new renaissance really needs to happen, in, in, at least in this country. Because, like, we're snapping, like, fucking rubber bands, man, everywhere we go. Like, fuck, man, there was... There's that dude who shot up the fucking uh the uh the parade on 4th of July and uh, instead of like figuring out what the hell the deal is like but everyone on Twitter it was a left guy it was a right guy it was everything Rawr! like dude you guys are so hell bent on like establishing immediately the your politics and you know Sam Hyde yeah, you say it was Sam Hyde and just move on like usual, you know, that's the meme. But man, it would be so much better if you guys were just, I don't know, painting, you know, if, if, even if it was on an easel or an MS Paint. Maybe you guys can all do a podcast or maybe you can live stream. Maybe you could do react videos and stuff. Maybe, you know, it'd be so much better if we were just on Twitch and YouTube and TikTok all the fucking time. I think that like painting stops you from being a fascist in fact the most famous fascist was a painter of dogs yeah so, famous german I mean, yeah. painter yeah i mean i don't think it's just gonna stop you well I, I don't know if there's a painter to fascist pipeline or anything like that uh, i think there might be it's called the my little pony community oh, well, <laughs> okay you you got me there uh but <laughs> I love but, I love the My Little Pony meme that it's like the two paths. There's like the the light path and the dark path, and it's like the the, the bronies choose two or paths: or trans Nazi. girl or awful Nazi. <laughs> yeah, which way, Western man or <laughs> Western yeah. pony? Yeah, that, that's that's just all I want to do, man. I just want to fucking make music. I just want to stream all the time. I just uh. I want to make YouTube videos all the time. I want to do Let's Plays all the time. Uh, I just, you know, I want to go walk around in the fucking park. I want to go to a museum. And I have no yes, time comrade. to live. What? I said, hell yes, comrade. Oh, don't say comrade. I'm, I'm not sold all the way on socialism or anything. I just. You're there, comrade Mo. I am not. I am not. I just, you know, I just, I, I, I want to be like, I just want to. Do something with my life other than fucking work, man. Because I I look I remembered uh, the other day I counted up how many jobs I've had just in like the last like ten years. It's considerable, and some of us just aren't really built to fucking work. Like I don't need I don't need some authoritarian fucking middle manager getting up my ass because I didn't shave one day or. You know, I took 10 seconds too long to flip a patty or uh, I, I, I there was a comma misplaced in a fucking report I did. I mean, it's just so fucked up. And I just I, I don't like managers. I don't like authority. I, I don't really I don't really get along with people. I think the older I get, the shorter my temper is getting. Because oh, I yeah. got into an argument with my uh, with my. uh like, I guess, shift supervisor, or, like, maybe my, uh, 
Oh, uh... You got it. I believe in you. you uh, fuck. There. No, I'm trying to remember, like, what, what, do, you, what do you call your, uh... Your, your, your group, your team, team lead. There we go. Yeah, I got an argument with my fucking team lead because he was fucking sweating me on asking for, like, a little bit of a raise. And, like, here I am, I'm making, like, all these, uh... All these, uh, appointments for... And, hold on. Yeah, raises don't exist. Fuck, in sorry. Uh, sorry, there was something in the back of my throat. Yeah, that, that's so fucked up. Like, dude, the the whole fucking office is against you, the average everyday, you know, American worker. And honestly, like, this is a real good argument for, like, total unionization uh, across the fucking know? board. Well, because I'm, I'm already... Uh, very, very, very unapologetically pro-union, especially after working over at the, uh, the the nuclear plant, and I saw how the unionists work. You know, literally as, Homer like, Simpson yeah, working I at actually, the fucking nuclear plant. Dude, yeah, yeah, I, I I miss I miss my Homer Simpson days because I actually had a blast uh, working over at the nuclear power plant because it was a totally great job. Uh, but, uh, I saw how the unions worked versus, and how much they were getting paid versus like how me and mine are working and we're getting okay paid. <laughs> but, uh, him, uh, I, I don't have the fuck man right in the back of my throat. Hold on a second. Competent podcaster. And, oh, yes. No, no, no. I, I, I made chili earlier and it was some good chili this time, but like a piece of meat or like some fucking piece of onion or something is like just doing the speed bag punch with my fucking uvula in the back of my fucking throat. And it is just bothering the fuck out of me. I think I got it now, but, uh, yeah, man, I just think that we, we should like all be collectively bargaining, you know, for our fucking wages. And it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that fucking big a deal. To, like, give everyone, like, a decent living fucking wage. And, you know... You can start like, a union. Do I don't it. know how to start a union, and I, I don't... I, I don't... And besides, it, I also live in Texas, so uh, unionist, unionist work is, you know, pre-established with a company the size of, like, a nuclear plant. Uh, you might not even be like an American a, soon, Mo. Te Texas uh, is trying to get out. It's trying to be oh, their own thing. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, I, th I thought that it was last month we said that this uh, the next month we were going to be opening a referendum or something to uh, leave the union. Yeah, that worked out really well last time for you Southerners. Uh, well, Texans, excuse me. Let's just <laughs> let's let's use the correct terminology. Let's not assign Southerner just well, I, yet. Huh? I I can assign correct terminology. Confederates. Uh, Nazi, uh, no, no, not cause, no, not 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 either one. I don't see any of the statues going up Blade yet of fucking Ted Cruz or crackers, or you know? Greg Abbott. You know, I don't see any of the fucking statues going up yet. But uh. <laughs> But they built yeah, a man. statue of Ted Cruz. You know, the first thing I'm tweeting is, oh my god, I can't believe they honored Mo Diggity with a statue. statue well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about goddamn time. Everything I've done for this fucking state, hell yeah, they should honor me. Big brass statue in the middle of fucking nowhere. Or, you know, at least next to C.V. Ray Vaughn in Austin, because that shit's fucking awesome. I mean, I, I can't... I don't know what month I started working, but like... Yeah, I'm in a union, and I get, like... I've already had, like, two raises, and there's already a third one coming next year, like... Sweet. Yeah, fuck yeah. Dude, unions are great. Imagine obtaining money. Can't be yeah. me. I don't know, like, a, personally, I, I think that, yeah, things will start getting a little expensive, but we'll the, but the markets will adjust, and they'll go back down and settle at a reasonable price, like... Every like uh, you know what taught me we've that... been fighting the fight for fifteen for so long that like the cost of living is now thirty two dollars an hour. So it's like uh, you know like what what are you gonna do? They're just I gonna mean, keep it's... cucking you and cucking you, and then like the cost of living goes up fucking double, and then like you're still fighting to get to fucking fifteen when the cost of living is thirty two. Yeah, you know, like I learned from just cigarette smoking. 
like how the like taxes really go up like we're going to tax cigarettes again another tax increase and the the market will the the industries will absorb that they'll pay it off and then everything fucking levels out to normal fucking prices you know so through cigarettes and through that's through the tobacco industry i figured out how the quote unquote rise of everything really kind of works you know and yeah, there's like a billion other factors that I'm not mentioning because I'm not a fucking economist. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, like everything will like level out at the end and we'll have like more money to spread around the fucking cities, man. I mean, it just helps us out so fucking much, you know, like a like a looking at how everything how bad everything's been since like, you know, the Bush years like, dude, like, like it's it's almost a. Uh, it's almost impossible to live without getting food stamps and sometimes without getting rental assistance. It's like we almost fucking need this shit. And it just it aggravates the fuck out of me. And all I want is to just fucking live peacefully and just be left the fuck alone. No Unfortunately, no yeah, it just seems like the world is getting more and more uninhabitable for the poor. And it's yeah. Unfortunate. It's or like the Western world, I guess. Yeah, 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 like our world, like our zeitgeist. I don't want to think that it'll get a lot better in the end, but I don't, I don't know, man. Well, I don't, I don't know if it will. Right. <laughs> like this is, it's gonna get real bad. Oh yeah, yeah, other. dude. It, yeah, it's a uh, everything's going to fucking hell. I mean the. Uh, the 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 Euro v Wade thing like that's just the fucking beginning. Uh, they're they're going to go after like I, I didn't believe this. I'll admit, I I thought it was just like a. And I'm not trying to sound like Alex Jones here. I thought it was kind of a leftist propaganda that the fucking uh, Supreme Court's not going after marriage guys. It's not going after this and after that. And after I got comfortable having that mentality. As soon as fucking Roe v. Wade happened, uh, fucking Clarence Thomas did declare that they were going to go after all those things. And I'm like, how the fuck are you honestly going to actually prove all these guys right? Do you have any idea how big of a fool I fucking feel like? Like, I just didn't think that was going to actually, you know, happen. It's Not in America. They've been saying it since the Obama administration that their plan well, was to get rid of Roe v. Wade. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, yeah, because it, it was a like a, the, the talking point is it, it is a a forty year fucking plan that conservatives did have to oust Roe v. Wade. I personally, though, don't, and this is just my personal opinion. Don't take it with as much salt as you want. I kind of think that the pro choice movement didn't do us any favors either. Unfortunately, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, I just like, well, bad optics, uh, bad optics, uh, uh, going up to like, uh, churches with, you know, like Catholic churches, uh, screaming at them, uh, screaming, thank God for abortion, taking abortion selfies and stuff saying, I can't wait to kill this fucking kid. And then there was the pictures from the protests recently. Like, dude, this is why people are not uh that they're not jumping on our fucking side anymore because they see this shit to the the average nobody at the average middle of the road person when we're asking them to make up their mind and pick a side when they when they contrast compare uh you know a pro lifers hey uh every life is sacred even with the ridiculousness of uh life begins at conception which is fucking stupid uh, they see that versus the uh the the person who has uh thank God for abortion. It's just a or like a pregnant chick. God, this one, uh, a pregnant chick that says still a bundle of cells. I'm like, dude, this makes us look so fucking bad, and no one's like we're we're losing the optics war, and I think people need to take optics a lot more seriously because this is. This is yeah, super the fucking problem important, is, or you know? the, the not problem, or, you know, it's just like, it, <clears throat> it's not really an optics war. I mean, like, the, the pro-choice side is the, the majority side. It's just like, they have 
Supreme Court ownership. Like, sure, do do? sure. Just, there's, that's it. Nothing I know, but it. this isn't like a fucking like. Yes, like w we vote democratically, but like the Supreme Court's the Supreme Court. Like they can just do this shit now. They run the fucking house, like the proverbial house, not the the legislative house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I just it's even the majority though, opinion optics don't matter at this point. Like literally, oh, like well, it's just fucking, I don't know. Fucking, I. I guess I disagree there just because like, well, all right. Okay. So look at what's going to happen in November, right? Even with the Roe v. Wade thing. Okay. I do. I do kind of see the big red wave coming and it's going to, because like, even though the people uh, like the pro choicers, we, we do have the majority opinion. A lot of those pro choicers still do vote, not always Democrat and seeing the, thank God for abortion stuff. And though the one chick right in front of the Catholic protesters, I'm going to kill the baby. And she's got like a bunch of plastic fucking babies on her, uh, on a string. And she's like flipping out. People see that. And they, they become afraid of our side. And with all the, and with all the disinformation that's happening, that's going on out there, that does affect us, and I think it, at November, I, I think that we're going to pay for that. <laughs> and I know that sounds cucked, and you know, you can call me a cuck if you want, like anyone, but I, I don't know. I, I think that I think optics do matter, despite having majority opinion, and we need to remember that. Like it's we're we're back to the hearts and minds uh, uh, portion of optics now, and I, I think I think we've a step we we've uh fell back a bunch of steps unfortunately of course this is all my opinion like this i mean it's it's going to turn to like extreme rioting oh yeah 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 it, it's extreme rioting because like and it's it's started it like started with this it's gonna be it's gonna be up up the uh up the alley soon yeah yeah it's like, it, it's, it started and, with of course this. everyone you get these like milk toast fucking liberals who are like no you need to get out and vote and it's like we're we're beyond that and if this keeps happening, like, how do you affect change in the United States? History shows you violently protest. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, history I, shows that's how any change happens in this fucking country. Like, it's unfortunate, but like, that's that's what happens. Like, yeah, I, I've even been arguing with. Uh, well, see, here's the other thing too. Maybe let me float this to the both y'all. Or um, before I do, Riley, did you have anything to say before I move off this topic? Holy, you know, I just, I remembered there was something I was going to ask you guys like an hour ago, and then you asked Robin if she had anything left to say, and we just I never went back to it. Ask and I forgot. Oh, shit, okay. my bad, dude. So, yeah, like, this is like an angel and the devil on the shoulder moment. I'm going to ask, and I want perspective from both of you. Should I get into an MMORPG? And if so... Yes, get into World of one? Warcraft. Oh. Yeah, get into World of Warcraft. Okay, why? Uh... Oh yeah, uh, World of Warcraft and or uh, Guild Wars Two. If you like Final Fantasy fourteen, apparently that's really good. If you get into that, I'll get into it. What kind of like gameplay loops do you like? Is the real question. I don't know. I like all sorts of things. Well, do you like questing? Do you like raiding? You know, like yeah, law lo extra long. Uh, instances where you're fighting a bunch of bosses and fighting a bunch of enemies and looting and stuff uh do you like dungeon crawling which is just like a little mini fucking dungeon where you fight a bunch of little bosses you do a little bit of looting but it's like scaled down other than a raid yeah that's stuff i don't have much experience with which is why i'm kind of tentatively interested do you like in number that. going up i do like number going up have you heard <laughs> of old school runescape no <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Uh, the old school RuneScape is number go up the game. I just like the the concept of like questing and like raiding, like having like a raid group. Like people tell me about their raid groups, and I'm like, yo, that sounds lit as fuck. Why don't I do that? Why don't I play video games that other people play, and then I play them with them? Yeah, but de definitely World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, Final Fantasy 14. If you're into that. 
<clears throat> oh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I, Not I Knights of the Old Republic, to... <laughs> the Old Republic. <laughs> the Old Republic? I'll yeah, have to check that out, too. Isn't Star that Wars the, the Old Republic. Isn't that the free-to-play one? Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, so there you go. You got a free-to-play one. Uh, you'll have to buy World of Warcraft, but it's totally worth it. I think Guild Wars 2 is free to play. And if you like the game, you can buy. Uh, you all can of them buy, are free like, to play light anyway, like pretty much all MMOs. Well, kind of like World of Warcraft, you play to level 30 and yeah. then they expect you to pay for it after that. Is Final Fantasy 14 crossplay? I honestly have no idea. I haven't played it. I don't even know what, what it's on besides PC. We could do that. We could all get into Final Fantasy fourteen together. That'd be based. How much is it? I don't know. Like, it, it costs as much as a normal video game to like have all the things. I'm pretty sure. Or no, it might be. It might be subscription based. Actually, I don't That's know. That's what I think. Uh, I'm looking on Steam. It's a starter edition, twenty dollars. Okay. And then it also says, oh, it, oh, this includes 30 games of free game time. So yeah, it comes with a free month. Okay, cool, so it is. Cool. You pay $20, you get a free month, and then after that, it's uh, subscription-based. Okay. Man, World of Warcraft, when you bought the game and the expansions, the, their little battle chest, it came with a month of free game time, and every expansion up until Legion came with free fucking game time. And then they just stop that, and it really fucking and, and sucks. It came I with wish like uh, free like character level ups to the new expansion mm -hmm. level. So if you wanted to have an alts character with like, you they know, still class. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, Final Fantasy, uh, World of Warcraft, uh, Guild Wars two. And are you, you can know, get those married are... in Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. I it's don't all, know why you can't get and shit. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> I think Blizzard is largely given up on WoW. They just won't put the shit in there that'll give the game more longevity well, and all vanilla. that. I like vanilla, I have a few friends that play it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I thought vanilla was fine, but I think uh, Burning Crusade and uh, Cataclysm were my two favorite from the old from the old expansions from the old days. Uh uh wrath of the lich king i just got bored with i'm i'm planning on playing wrath when the new Sir classic server comes out but uh out of the 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 new ones i i think uh i think uh, my favorite has been like a warlords of draenor and mist of pandaria mist of pandaria was fucking awesome oh miss miss was so much fucking fun people shit on it but there's no reason to do so. It was a fun expansion. We had tons of shit to do. Uh, all the vanilla warriors, uh, the vanilla players were bitching. There's so many dailies. Because, man, like, we need shit to do. You know? Like, I'm fine with dailies. I thought Legion was kind of a snooze fest. And Battle for Azeroth had its ups and downs. But it was largely, I think, a lot of fun. And, uh... This new one that we're on right now, Shadowlands, uh, I'm, I'm bored with it. It's it's like I'm kind of done with it. I don't like the new area, the closing area. Nothing fun really has happened. Like I, I like uh, I like the the Shadowlands uh, part of it, but I, I don't like the rest of it. Unfortunately, ratings okay. New age MMOs. What of of the the dungeons are okay. The raids are okay. The PvP is okay. But if you go back from Warlords on back, like everything was a lot more fun. <laughs> Legions are. Right. Well, I guess there's there's Genshin if you want, right? Like, yeah, there you love a good gotcha. Oh God! <laughs> like, how much of a weeb do you want to be? <laughs> Genshin seems like it might be cool. It's free Breath of the Wild, pretty much. Like, it's just it's free MMO Breath of the Wild. Yeah, seems kind of lit. I might have to give it a give it a try. And I heard like the gotcha stuff doesn't really come into play until late late game. <laughs> like, All right. I played a little bit of it. I leveled up a, little, a few times. I didn't really get super far in Genshin, but it it was fun. Cool. 
Uh, all right. So we're at the hour 21 mark. Uh, does anyone else want, uh, we were, we were talking, uh, about like the Supreme court and everything after that, Robin, did you have anything else you wanted to say after that or anything? Well, Riley, do you, do you have anything else you want to add to your MMO exploration? Nah. Okay. Supreme court download old school for <laughs> <laughs> I think if the Supreme Court played old school RuneScape, they'd be a little more chill. Exactly. They just learned to say slurs. And... Hell yeah! <laughs> just fucking all all of them play Call of Duty, and just fucking yell at people in the lobby and stuff. It'd have been fun to frag Anton and Scalia when he was still alive and COD. That would be great. Mo, what's your favorite slur? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Nini. He say, he saves that for uh, 4chan. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, did you hear what happened to 4chan or, like, what they're doing? No. Yeah, right. they, got in the, they got in the Hunter Biden shit, didn't they? Okay, oh, yeah, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, hear here's that. the thing. They, <laughs> they didn't get the phone. They got his iCloud uh, stuff, and that he is... Uh, like, celebrities and shit keep using iCloud. <laughs> time because... and time again, it fucks up. <laughs> time and yeah. time again, celebrities use it. Dude, celebrities, politicians, and all that, they, they don't understand cybersecurity at all, you know? Like the, the the Hillary Clinton email thing, that could have been easily prevented if the people in her staff had their heads up their asses and actually took cybersecurity seriously. That Same thing with Hunter. The fucking iCloud after fucking the fappening is, is mind-boggling to me. Mm-hmm. But apparently, them getting into the iCloud stuff on, on Hunter, Hunter Biden is a lot bigger than uh, than we think because now it exposes a giant security vulnerability in the iCloud software again. And uh, anyone who uses iCloud after this, after the fapping and stuff, is an idiot. Like, come on, people. Like, do, do you not learn from the mistakes of others? Like, you, you're just, you're asking for it. You're asking for like a cyber hack at this point, you people, know? I think most of these people don't even realize their stuff is on the cloud. Like it's just like, oh, you hit button and it sync all things to cloud, and then it syncs all yeah. your stuff to the cloud, and then you don't think about it, and then you're like, actually, all your fucking everything you download is now going on to the cloud. You, you got to be careful with that stuff. Every every naughty picture you take, every video you made, it's all up there now. There's a digital footprint and people need to, they need to get smart and start becoming, you know, VPN pilled, even though like if you're in the outs of, with the government, they can still the like get into your shit. Is that VPNs don't do all the magical shit that everyone says VPNs do. Like it yeah, does, it, it will in very niche circumstances, mask your IP. Yeah, it, it does. It does a little. It gives you a little bit more security than normal, but people really do have. We we have, uh, and I'm at fault of this too. Uh, we we've all romanticized uh, VPNs, like really heavily. Like if you want to be like, if you want to be like uber uber safe, like we you'd have to like download a virtual machine and then inside the virtual machine, like mask that you're in a vir virtual machine using software and then use a vpn alongside that like you'd, you'd have to do like so many layers to actually get any anonymity online yeah like, and a get VPN proxies up one tiny little tool it's a it's a good tool for what it does but it doesn't do all the shit everyone says it does every time i see a fucking like nord vpn at like advertisement or something i'm like no everything that they're making you say is not necessarily true I mean, even oh, the Netflix you... shit, it doesn't even work anymore. Like, it hasn't worked in so long. <laughs> what do you mean, Netflix shit? Where it's like... Oh, 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 oh where yeah. you uh, go into different uh, uh, regions and stuff? Yeah, like, that shit oh, hasn't yeah. worked in so long. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, it doesn't work anymore. Like, it, you have to get into some shady uh, VPN stuff to really get, like, total fucking security. You know, like, uh, get into the shit where that hackers use, you know? Oh, does that Netflix shit not work anymore? No, 
hasn't worked in forever, but people still say it and get people to buy like buy their fucking NordVPN like call to actions. Like that's bullshit. Yeah, and fucking NordVPN was exposed with a gigantic, uh, uh, I guess, a uh, security breach, and a lot of people's data uh, got leaked out of there and all that. And you know, it's why like I've never applied for like NordVPN sponsorship or anything. Is like. I'm not going to like tell my friends. I'm not going to lie to my friends' faces. Yeah. It, it it's useful like piracy it's useful for, like light piracy because it's like you it it does take minimal effort to see your actual IP, like for your ISP to see what your actual IP is. And for the vast majority of cases, they're not going to do it just to give you like the first of your three like cease and desist warnings. Like, they, they just don't care enough to, like, go through the effort of seeing who you actually are. They're just like, eh, whatever, fuck it. Like, enjoy your free content. Mm-hmm. But pretty much everything else, it's it's not useful. It doesn't do all that, like, browse anonymously. Nobody knows who you are. The, the, your ISP, you're invisible. <laughs> yeah, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Epic huh. hacker mode. Yes, you are anonymous. You are 4chan. You never are for game. You are forgot. 4chan. You are the anonymous hacker 4chan. Oh, God. I like to do an episode one day just going at, going over like America's cringe anti crime, anti counterculture uh, nonsense. On a car, would you? Oh, God. Like, yeah, you wouldn't download a car. Say no to drugs. Yeah, I'd download a car. If I had the op- option to download a car, of course I'd fucking download a car. Like, this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Like, oh, dude, a couple. <laughs> yeah, like, why Why do you think my brain is an egg? Because it's fucking not. I'm like, a, I'm like, I'm a more of a loaf of bread because I'm bacon right now. Hell yeah. Ba-da-ba-da. <laughs> Or maybe I'm a pig because I'm baking you a fucking turkey. And this has been the MoCast. <laughs> <laughs> we should do MoCast does VR chat one time. That'd be fun. Yeah, we'll buy me a VR headset then, Mo. I ain't buying you a VR headset. I can barely afford mine. Well, 300 you fucking it, bucks, man. It, it obviously improves the experience, but you don't technically need a VR headset to play VR chat, do you? No, not at all, not at all. You just need a desktop. No, but you should pay your employees to make content with you, right? Yes, please please pay us in the in the amount of one headset <laughs> each. Tell you what, w- w- once, <laughs> I, once I start getting this big sponsor bucks, uh, you know, I'll buy everyone a... Uh, a, uh, an Oculus Quest 2 VR headset. There we go. Well, I think you should PayPal me $10 USD right now. Oh. <laughs> Not going to PayPal you anything. <laughs> PayPal. My apologies. PayPal. <laughs> More of the accent coming out. PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> PayPal. How do, you up, brother? How, how do you fuck up the language you were literally born into in the country that speaks it primarily? He's from Florida. <laughs> Florida. You know, if uh, my credit were just a little bit better, I would just... Uh, PayPal me $10 uh, USD. No, no, I'm not going to do that <laughs> at all. That's like the last thing I'll ever do, Riley. You'll never get that $10. But, <laughs> you know, like, if maybe I can, like, just get Mosai Productions uh, and register it as an LLC... And see if I can get some like corporate credit card uh, line of credit and stuff going on, because then I'll rent a fucking building somewhere, maybe in the middle of us. Like maybe uh, there's got to be something where we can uh, we can like uh, apply for like corporate housing or something, and we could do just like the MoCast house or something. We could all just like live together and just make content, be a content house. That would be pretty base. Find the center. Of three cities. <laughs> the center of three cities in different states. <laughs> I yeah. kind of want to do... I would love to do Kentucky. 
Kentucky's uh, low cost of living. It's fucking beautiful everywhere. Uh, the politics isn't really in your face. Like the people are largely libertarian and they leave you alone. I mean, this is like my, uh, based on the uh, the one trip that I had a couple of years ago. It was fucking awesome. It's just so beautiful too. And, and there's like lots of living states, huh? What are the lowest cost of living states? Uh, it, it, the the South, Alabama, uh, West for. Well, yeah, West Virginia is actually paying people to go live there. Apparently, I'm hearing to come work there. Um, there's also, I mean, the more north you get, the more expensive everything gets. So I hear, I hear Iowa is pretty inexpensive. Like yeah, Iowa but it's always. I also uh, like, but Kentucky. you're going to see, but you're going to see a hundred miles of fucking flat cornfield, uh, no matter where you look. And you're gonna blow your fucking brains out. <laughs> so, so no, we're not going to Iowa. Uh, but uh, I, I think I have a friend in Iowa. Iowa's not bad. There's just nothing there. Um, but yeah, I, I would totally love to do Kentucky. Uh, what about you, Riley? Where would you love to do a uh, MoCast Center or base of operations? It's literally wherever cost of living is the lowest. Like, I guess. I guess if money wasn't an issue, I'd want to go to, like, a nice place like Colorado. But, like, realistically... Too many it, yuppies. Too many yuppies? Fair enough. But, yeah, yeah. realistically, like, like, Kentucky or Iowa or somewhere where it's not going to cost that much to live. Yeah, uh... Really, like, the, the, the southern states have, like, low cost of living, but also low standard of living. Like... You get to <laughs> Mississippi and Alabama and stuff and Louisiana, like you, you'll you'll see what Republican political corruption and like fucking uh Southern police officer corruption really really looks like, and you see that everybody lives in poverty. It's like that Family Guy joke when they lo relocate to the Deep South. It's essentially exactly that. Well, the the exact halfway point between us and Mo is uh, Ottawa, Tennessee. Tennessee, I have family that live in Tennessee. Why? Because you're the only ten I see. Oh, lame. <laughs> what did you say? Why? Yeah, why do people live in Tennessee? Fuck if I know. I mean, it's beautiful there. I mean, you got like you know those. Uh, uh, lush pine trees and you know other trees up in the fucking mountains you know like tennessee mountains are fucking like a, a sight to behold it's a terror driving them because like it's all like you can't see you you literally cannot see more than like 20 feet in front of you because the curves in the way and you know wrecks can happen at any fucking second because people love to get drunk there in tennessee so yeah, do bro. I wouldn't mind living on the East Coast though. There's nowhere near Florida. Florida's kind of cool. No, no, <laughs> no. But only because of the wacky wildlife, all your invasive species and. <laughs> There is some pretty wacky wildlife. Like you got the fucking blue and gold macaws. The uh, fucking Burmese pythons in the fucking Everglades. <laughs> so in other in other states, are there not just like lizards everywhere? Like the that's ninja a crocodiles, effect, isn't not it? Really. I know no, in Miami, not, you not guys really. have the day geckos. You have invasive day geckos. No, but we just have like little lizards everywhere. We have yeah. like lizards everywhere. You're talking about like a Knowles, right? Like there are lizards in my house right now. No, we, we have like tiny little geckos here and there, but they largely stay away from like a from like a residential areas. Like you shoo a few of them away, they get the message and they fuck off. But like we we don't get like Florida iguana and and shit like that. We don't really get too many lizards. Like the 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 more west in the desert in Texas you will see more desert wildlife, but that's natural. So you will get iguanas 
and tarantulas and scorpions and more snakes and shit like that. But here in East, you know, in the Southeast Texas, a little bit, but not really. Then again, I've only really seen snakes a few times on my pro- my mom and dad's property a few times in a few years ago. I want to get a snake real bad. <laughs> nah. I want to get a snake. I want to get a pet, but I don't want to watch it die because I'm not going to look forward to the day it dies. I'm going to be really sad. Sounds like you want like a tortoise. Or a bird. Like a parrot. I can be a parrot guy. Well, I mean, it does suck if you're doing podcasts because they're not quiet. <laughs> yeah, and my brother is going to have a cat. So, yeah. Uh, Professor McGonagall. And uh, he came with two. Professor McGonagall and uh, Dumbledore. And uh, Dumbledore got ran over by a car. Well, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, don't. that goes to show you don't name your animals after dead characters. Name it that way, there's a tragic irony when they die. Uh, what did a- what did H.P. Lovecraft name this cat? <laughs> Seems like a good name. I, I don't I don't know, and I and, quite and, uh, <laughs> and I'm not going <laughs> to say the time. word, you know, on there. So thank you very much. Uh, speaking of which, does anyone have anything else they want to talk about? We are at the 137 mark, so <laughs> yeah, no, it's over. Yeah, it's over now. This is the end of the MoCast. I hope you had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, <clears throat> closing thoughts. Robin, you got anything to say? That's it. All right. Well, in that case, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me which dot television. Slash Inside Alloy, and then on Twitter at Inside Alloy. All right, and Riley, where can they find you? Find me at uh, fucking anchor.fm slash Riley Megafeed. It's the Riley Podcast Megafeed. There's shit there. Go listen to it. And the links in the description is everything else that I do. And finally, you can find me at twitter.com forward slash Side Gaming. Got a pin tweet with all my stuff on there. Check it out. Also, go check out twitch.tv slash modiggity. I'm almost at a thousand followers. Got 30 more to go, and I'm I'm fucking on a thousand. And uh yeah. That's uh that's all I gotta say about that. Thank you everyone for coming out and listening. I do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe or follow button or whatever device on whatever your preferred social media or listening listening uh, site, streaming service that you want, okay? Because we need every algorithm point we can have. (laughs) Yes, yes. So I've been Mo. I've been Riley. Yeah, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.